In session four, I'm going to give you an introduction to multi-track editing in Adobe Audition. To access the multi-track, simply click to access the multi-track, simply click the icon up here in the top left. It'll ask you to start a new multi-track session, which I can call Mike's Podcast, and then click OK. And suddenly, there's your multi-track. Now, it looks quite daunting at first. All these different tracks, what do I do with them? Well, the first thing you can do is drag in the audio you want to use. So I'm going to drag in podcast, which is me speaking, and I'm going to drag in this rock music bed. Now, I want to change the order of things and make sure it's mixed nicely in the multi-track. So how can I do that? Well, first of all, let's take a listen to the start of my podcast. Podcast episode one. In this episode, I'd like to introduce you to multi track editing. Also, I had to perform fade and cross fade reviews. So you can see it's me rambling on and on. And I use the fast forward button, by the way, down there just to speed up what I was saying and listen to it really quickly. So, first of all, I might want to zoom in using my magic mouse and selecting up here at the very top where the time appears. And then I want to maybe split this track. So I put the playhead where I want to split. And a quick way to do this is hit Command K. And now your wave has been split in two. Now, if I want to start moving a wave on the multi-track, I can right-click any audio and drag it like this. Zooming out, I can now move my rock bed back in so that it comes in at the end of me introducing the podcast. Podcast episode one. And in comes the music bed. Now, when I zoom out a little bit more and move in my speech here, you'll notice that the bed is a bit too loud and competes with what I'm saying. In this episode, I'd like to... In can't hear anything at all. Coming up in session six, I'll show you how to automatically duck music when your voice comes in. But for now, I'll show you how to do it manually. Zooming in, look at this yellow line. They appear on all tracks. And notice when I click there, a little diamond appears there. I can click here and put another one in and drag it down to change the volume. So you see, that's where the volume is at 0 dB and the volume there is at minus 16 dB on the music track. Now let's take a listen. Podcast episode one. In this episode, I'd like to introduce you to multi-track editing. And you can see how well that works. Now if I zoom in here and then click this button down here, you'll notice it pops out another track here which can affect any audio on track one and the same for track two I just pop out this triangle here and again I've got a line here where I can make changes to my track two audio now I can go in and select what I'd like to change so perhaps I'd like to change the pan on a track which means I could pan something from the left ear to the right ear and I do this by dragging this all the way to 100% left and then I can put more points on and maybe drag that to 100% right. And now when I zoom out and play, you'll hear the first bit on the left-hand side and the second bit on the right-hand side. Podcast episode one. Another cool thing that you can do is change the track EQ, which can be quite fun for maybe taking out all of the high frequencies and leaving just the base of a bed. Go to track EQ, plenty of stuff here, but I like to play with the high shelf gain and the low shelf gain. High shelf gain will be able to reduce all of those high frequencies, so let's go for that one. You'll see a new sort of pinky ready line appears, and I can maybe put one point here, go along here, and then reduce the high frequencies as the track plays. Zoom out and maybe bring it back there. Have a listen to how that sounds. Track. Now you'll notice the intro is not complete and I may want to cut out some audio. You can do this the same as in the waveform view by selecting, deleting, and then clicking out and dragging your audio together. So listen to this edit. You on any track, mixing down a multi-track session. And notice when I zoom in, there are lovely orange lines here. These are your crossfades. Now, you can change these and manipulate these if you'd like by using this little icon here. I can drag the crossfade out. I can change it around to be exactly the kind of crossfade that I would like to have. And finally, I'm going to delete this bit and move this last bit of audio to the end. Now, if I delete the last bit of the music bed and move this in, you'll notice a nice crossfade again comes in off the end of the bed before my voice comes in. And have a listen to this and saving that file. Now say you want to mix down everything that you've produced in this multi-track session. You can do that by going to multi-track, mix down session to new file, and click entire session. Notice I've assigned it to the hotkey D, so it's really easy for me to do that. Once you've got Mike's podcast mixed down one, you can then save it as a file that's ready to upload to your media host. Now in Adobe Audition, there is a basic metadata window, which you can access by going into window, metadata, and as you can see there, some of your ID3 tags that can go in. 
Now, it can't do everything like adding artwork and all the tags you may want to add, so it's best to look into a custom solution. I'll get rid of that metadata tab and I'll go into the File, Save As. This will allow me a number of options like the file name, which I might just call MRC001, and then the location, which is going to be my desktop, that's fine. The format now, I'm going to change to MP3 files, so it's ready to upload as a podcast. Sample type, you don't really need to touch. 44100 Hz stereo is absolutely fine, that's CD quality. Then the format settings, change there, and make sure your type is constant, not variable. And usually for a music podcast, 128 kilobits per second is absolutely sufficient. If, of course, you're doing speech only, you may want to make your audio mono, which would then mean you'd have only one leg at 64 kilobits per second. Stereo, of course, is two legs, each at 64 kilobits per second, making that 128 kilobits per second. Click OK to that. Include markers and other metadata, you can tick that off if you want because of course you're going to write your metadata at a later stage. Click OK and you've saved your podcast ready audio file.